hi everyone and welcome again to the WHD Lend video podcast series, Life After Lend. Um, today we are happy to welcome Allison Ewell um, from the Lend class of 2015-2016. Um, my name is Janine Castillo. I am the program director for the Lend training program. Lend is leadership education in neurodevelopmental and related disabilities. It is an interdisciplinary leadership training program, bringing together graduate students, professionals from healthcare fields, as well as family members of individuals with disabilities and self-advocates, individuals with disabilities who are interested in and working not just on advocacy for themselves, but advocacy on behalf of others. I am joined today by my co-host, Ms. Karen Millman. So I will let Karen um, say hi and introduce herself. Hi, um, welcome Allison uh, to the video podcast, Life After Lend. Uh, I am a Lend family faculty. And I also coordinate um, the family partnership session and the transition session um, for the LEND calendar year. I will also like to introduce our audience to Allison, who is a graduate class of 2016. Um, that same year, Allison also graduated um, cum laude from Mercy College with a master's degree in communication disorders. So her discipline and specialty is speech language pathology and also achieved um, summa cum laude status from New York Medical College with a graduate certificate in children with special health care needs. While completing her LEND fellowship, she was also a youth said um, diversity fellow here at WIHD. Allison's um, professional work since graduation has focused on treating pediatric populations in the New York City metro area. Currently, she works for a public preschool program as a speech and language pathologist, and she's also an adjunct professor at Emerson College in its speech at Emerson graduate program. Allison also trains parents and other primary caregivers of young children on language development techniques in order to help expand young children's abilities to effectively communicate. So Allison, um, welcome and tell us what brought you to LEND? Why were you interested in the LEND Fellowship Program? Sure. So I first heard about the LEND program during my first year at Mercy College. Uh, Dr. Helen Bueller, who uh, was the founder and the director of the program at the time, she's since retired, uh, was um, very, um, very interested in getting strong uh, students from Mercy uh, to even consider uh, the LEND program. Um, and what I became very interested in was the interdisciplinary nature of the program. I thought it was really important as I was um, learning how to be a speech language pathologist and growing uh, my knowledge about the field to understand uh, how to relate my profession and my knowledge to other related disciplines and learning from um, from family members of uh, people who have disabilities, uh, from occupational therapists, from social workers, from psychologists, um, from genetic counselors. I thought that uh, that would be such a great opportunity for me to broaden my knowledge of and my ability to uh, work with families, especially. So that's really what brought me to LEND. And so the second year of my graduate program is when I participated in LEND um, and, uh, and the rest is history. <laughs> Can you share with us, I know, you know, Dr. Castillo gave you, and it's a very impressive bio you have, but just some of the key, um, key work that you've been doing yeah. since Lent. Uh, tell sure. us. Sure. So uh, I have been employed by two different school districts in the New York City Metro, treating and evaluating children ages, uh, really birth to 12-ish. Um, with a variety of diagnoses, really focusing on working with and integrating family support um, and collaboration with other providers, whether that be teachers, occupational therapists, physical therapists, and 
I started with that work through the schools. And while I still work full time for a school district, that also led me to practice um, independently through a private practice that I have where I will go into homes and uh, and evaluate and treat uh, our youngest uh, patients, clients, uh, usually the, the birth to five range. And a large part of that is having um, parents or other caregivers sit with me on the floor and really training them and instilling in them the confidence that you they too can help promote communication um, in the home with the child in really doing things that they're already doing. So at bath time, um, how to elicit and um, encourage communication. Uh, meal time, um, when you're in the grocery store, things like that. So that's been a real passion of mine since graduation. And, and that really in large part came from my training with Len, this collaboration. Um, and my latest endeavor, in addition to still doing those other two things, um, the school practice and the private practice um, has been working for Emerson College as an adjunct uh, for the last two years. It's a lot again on parent training and how to integrate uh, caregivers and community members who have uh, who have interest in these in these children who are having trouble communicating um, and part of that too is is the ability to reach these these graduate students who wouldn't otherwise have access to uh, a graduate program and so that is that is kind of twice beneficial because it's beneficial, of course, for these blooming clinicians um, to gain this education. And also they often stay in their communities that are underserved. And so they are able to, when they graduate and when they become certified, they are able to provide these really valuable services to these underserved uh, areas. Well, I mean, I think it's fascinating. A lot of what you said, first, I just want to comment on, I mean, in LEN, we talk about family professional collaboration, and that's exactly what you're talking about. Not mm -hmm. only are you treating the patient or the, the child, but mm -hmm. it sounds like you're working so closely with the parent or the, whoever the caregiver be, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that when you're not there, they are doing all those things to keep reinforcing the learning uh, for the child, which is huge. Yeah, know? yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's really what happens in between the sessions that makes all the difference. And yes, I am the professional and I have the most knowledge to give, but um, the progress will come more naturally and more quickly um, if those caregivers that are around the child the most uh, know what to do to just be constantly uh, enhancing the environment for, for uh, language opportunities. Makes sense. Makes sense. Just a quick follow up too, because one of the things I picked on is you're describing your um, working at a preschool, you have your private practice, you're um, educating the next um, um, generation of professionals, all the different um, areas that we we cover in, in line. So it's also nice to see how it all comes together. Um, and so I, I, I want to ask a follow up um, question. How do you Fit it all in. <laughs> That's a really good question. So um, my work schedule with uh, with the preschool is about eight thirty to three thirty, and so then um, my my private clients are often just right after that, and they they could be a few houses down the street from where I work. So I'm able to fit that in pretty easily. Um, and then at night is when uh, like a six I have a six thirty class. I have uh, an eight thirty class, and so. So yeah, it is a lot to fit in, but I think um, it's all very, it, all the work complements each other. I keep informed of best practices through, um, through, through all my work, but especially through uh, being involved in a graduate program that's constantly evolving. Every term the syllabus is changed and there are new, there's new research to talk about with the students and, and that lends to my work um, like on the ground with the children in the free school, with my colleagues. Um, and in my private practice. So um, it really, it's a, it's a very symbiotic relationship between all three. Um, so, so that's how I fit it in. 
Yeah. And and I have to say, I, I love to hear that because I know um, sometimes um, from, you know, from the LEND training perspective, and I know um, Karen can attest to this as, as faculty, we, we're all, we always want to make sure because there is um, a great depth and breadth to the training. And it, um, it's, it's, it's reassuring to hear that the variety of experiences in the, um, in the training program then um, translates and transfers nicely to what the professional life, um, life is like. Yes, and even though you probably don't get much sleep, you're loving what you're doing clearly. And yeah. that keeps you going, right? That fuels you, which is- Absolutely. Getting those texts from, um, from a private client's parents, which I encourage of, he said, I want, or he, you know, he said mama for the first time makes it all really worth it. Seeing how much it affects the entire family um, is really special and really fulfilling. Right. So what would you say, like, specifically from the LEND program, specifics that you could think of that impacted all the different, you know, work that you're currently doing? Absolutely. Uh, being able to interact with and work alongside so many different professions and learn really the ins and outs of um, what their expertise can be, how it can complement um, work that I'm doing has been hugely beneficial um, from a collaboration perspective to get to really make sure the child um, who I'm treating or I'm evaluating gets the best care um, or has access to the best care. I also found a huge component um, of LEND that spoke to me was an emphasis on healthcare literacy. So what is a standard score? What is a bell curve? Uh, what is a standard deviation? Um, what do levels of severity mean? Um, and why did I pick the, the frequency of, um, of speech therapy, things like that. So making sure that parents understand their options, making sure they understand what terms mean. Um, and I think the last point that I wanted to make as far as and the influence that Lend has had um, on my path is uh, really giving a non-judgmental space for um, in this case, uh, parents and caregivers to help them understand diagnoses, help them understand their choices, how to approach these conversations, how to integrate care across different domains, how to um, honestly provide a compassionate space for them to, um, to vent to me, to, to tell me their hopes, their fears, their dreams for their child, I think uh, might have been the most important um, thing that I learned from LEND and, and the thing that I really carry with me. We just recently had our session on um, healthcare transition, sure. um, pediatric to the adult yeah. healthcare world. Mm -hmm. And I think, as you say, um, we talked about healthcare disparities, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which clearly people with disabilities fall into that category of more, sure. more vulnerable populations. Mm -hmm. And so it's exciting to hear that we learn from family center practices um, how you speak about not having judgment, because at the end of the day, knowledge is power, right? And if Absolutely. parents don't learn what they need to learn and don't understand, as you say, healthcare literacy, if they don't learn the language, it's almost like when they sit at CSE meetings, if they don't know the jargon that people, how can they be their best, their child's best advocate? And, and just to, to follow up on, on that piece, Allison, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. you are originally from Vermont. Yes, I, yes, yes, yes. So you brought that perspective. And of course, I love to hear you also now talk about being in a position where you are now supporting and educating those who are coming from a similar um, 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 geographic background as you. So I'm wondering if you can just um, comment on that um, and expand on that a little bit more for us. Sure, sure. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I did come from a very rural area. Um, there was no graduate program in speech language pathology that I would be able to commute to. I have a sibling who's three and a half years younger than me who uh, has autism. And um, in the 90s, there, were, there was a lot less awareness about autism. Um, there was a lot less support. Um, and so I really saw that um, live, um, the struggles that parents can face um, educating themselves so that their child can be best educated and best served. And so uh, when, I, uh, when I decided to study speech and language pathology, 
Um, I knew that I wanted to take what I had learned and what I had seen from our family struggles, um, getting care for my sister, um, and try to inform, use that to inform my practice. So I really learned about informed consent and, uh, and access to healthcare. And uh, I really learned about how to not assume that, um, any one population knows necessarily how to access care and what's even available. If I was able to understand really what healthcare literacy was and, um, it was a lot about non-judgment and just presenting information in a very accessible way. Um, some of that has to do with language barriers, but some of it doesn't. Some of it has to do with um, a, a lack of literacy in, in the English language or um, really uh, it could be a lack of transportation to uh, some kind of center, some kind of healthcare center. And so using all of that information to really be able to lay out options um, and opportunities for patients and their families. So um, really taking, I, I work in several different states, so really taking the, the language from special education law or uh, healthcare law and being able to explain to parents, so now here are your options. Um, you can go the private practice route, but I do want to let you know these are your options in your local school district, and that is covered by your property taxes. And then I'll say, you know, you, you can also look and I can help you look um, in your health insurance, you, your child's health, health insurance, you very well may be able to access evaluations in a certain number of therapy sessions. And no, you don't have to go three towns over. Actually, this person doesn't really advertise, but they take insurance and they are five minutes from your house, things like that. There are um, providers who can come into the house, um, you know, early intervention programs, all of those things that... Um, are not necessarily easy or for parents or caregivers to access that aren't really in your face that otherwise you really have to seek out and you don't even really know the keywords, you know, if you have search online um, to even know how to contact these, these organizations. So really thinking critically about access um, in, in all domains has been um, a, a huge thing that I've taken away. I mean, it's amazing to me that hearing everything you're saying again and again is knowledge is power for parents. You know, Absolutely. more knowledge, the things that we can't assume that they know, right? That you're educating them about in terms of mm -hmm. the law and in terms of what they can expect from their insurance. Oh, yeah. I mean, how would they know to ask these questions? You know, how, right. how would they know? How Absolutely. Would they know? Yeah. And it really, I want to highlight that it really doesn't matter if, you know, if this child's parent is a lawyer in corporate role law, well, that doesn't mean they know anything about special education law or healthcare law. If they are, you know, a urologist, their parents are urologists, that doesn't mean that they um, know the questions to ask their pediatrician to get a referral for an evaluation. So again and again, knowledge is power and no assumptions can be made. Well, I've got to say just from listening to it, I'm sure Dr. Castillo feels the same. Those those students you're working with and the um, and the parents and, and caregivers are very fortunate, right? Because oh, they're getting so much. Really, <laughs> yes, I try. Thank you. Really, really, truly. Um, so, if you were to um, think about just a few key takeaways, like a few, just you know, from from the lead program. Again, there were so many different sessions and different projects and and um, opportunities. But what would you say, kind of were key you said mentioned family centered learning sure. practices yeah. any other a few others i think a lot of the informal education that i received um so just like the discussions the roundtable discussions we had um uh, as trainees uh was so valuable because i learned i had no idea what a genetic counselor did i had an idea but i had no idea the training that they had had and to understand what they do so that i can uh, talk to patients about uh, referring there or um, talking about genetic testing, things like that. Um, that was huge. It was, it was really uh, rejuvenating to be able to have a lot of informal conversations and be able to 
to, to feel challenged in a different way and a safe space. So a lot of those informal conversations where I got to learn about all of these different professions. Um, in addition to if a, if a, if a patient is local to uh, the Westchester area saying, hey, WIHD um, is this great resource that you could avail yourself of. I got to learn so much about WIHD and how unique um, the services they offer are. Um, and I think the last thing that um, is an overarching theme is um, connect with your fellow trainees, um, see, see what they have to offer in ter terms of knowledge that they can give that you might not have that could complement your practice um, and keep in touch with those trainees who you do connect with. Um, those connections can be so beneficial um, well after uh, the program, you know, mm -hmm. now it's seven years after the program. Um, and I'm still keeping in touch and really using the knowledge um, from the LEND program and all my work. It's really exciting to hear. And I mean, I think yeah. it's why we try to have, in addition to lectures, you know, a lot of time for informal conversations. Mm -hmm. And we also do like partnering and small grouping. Yeah. Is that way you really get to have those more intimate relationships with Definitely. the other students and learn from each other. Well, I, you know, I feel like from my standpoint, we've covered a whole lot and which is incredible. And um, if there is anything we didn't ask that you wanted to, um, to share, Allison, you know, um, feel free to, 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 you know, to add to the, to the conversation here as, as we're getting ready to, um, to wrap up. Um, I will say to, to anyone watching this who is considering uh, becoming a LEND trainee, please, please do it. Um, please do it. Um, you will not regret it. It was such a, a supportive environment. And so if you're considering doing LEND uh, in any capacity, definitely, definitely go for it. Yes, I concur. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could do it again. I, get, I still get the emails. I still get the emails. Like, consider being a LEN training. I'd love to, but I already did it. <laughs> uh, yes, and and we are in the midst of recruiting, so feel free to also share it with anyone that you um you know think would would benefit sure. um, from the from the training. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, your wealth of information and inspiration, both. And, and thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you for having me.